Going through Houston sport cars. We're not going to be just an intro. We are going to just go right into it. As always, you know, I'm Ruben Calavillo. We got my man Tapia, Mr. Harley, and you, and you already know who it is, Kenneth the Messenger. We're going to do a free agency. I know it's a little bit early, but this is the first video of, of free agency, right? Because every day in the NFL, it changes, right? People get hurt. People come back. So we're going to start off on offense first. I am going to go first. And for me, the Houston Texans need to sign Brandon Scherf guard from the Washington Redskins, right? 28 years old, 75 grade on pro football focus, one sack allowed last season, right? Three-time pro bowler, one-time all pro, 315 pounds. The dude is huge, right? And this offensive line, it did take huge step forwards, but I don't think Zach Fulton is the answer, right? He's been okay, but Brandon Scherf, who is has been the best offensive guard in the NFL for the past couple of seasons, He's in a situation in uh, in uh, Washington where they're losing, right? They're totally rebuilding. And I think adding someone like him, um, like I say, he's 28 years old, it's going to help his offensive line. It's going to help Titus Howard. There's nothing wrong with having a great offensive line, right? Having a great offensive line changes your game plan, just, you know, just just the whole thing. And if Bill Bryant stays, which it looks like he is going to, you know, it's definitely going it, to hurt his, help his. <laughs> Play scheme. Yeah. So I think the Houston Texans need to sign Brandon Sheriff and just fortify this offensive line. Mr. Kenneth. Okay, I think we should sign Robbie Anderson, wide receiver. I think we should keep Will Fuller just in case. Like, let's give Will Fuller another chance. And if this year don't go his plan, all right, let him walk. But I feel like Robbie Anderson, he can definitely help his offense a lot. You know what I'm saying? He's not an injury prone guy. And so I feel like you know what I'm saying? They help our offense tremendously. Both I had Roby Anderson on my list. I'm not sure if you guys did as well. Yeah. Roby Anderson, 778 yards, mm -hmm. 52 catches, five touchdowns. You know, he's playing for the Jets. In a horrible situation. A horrible coach who Adam Gase is. You know, it, you know, like Roby Anderson is not only going to challenge Will Fuller, but it's going to make this offense better, right? Because can you imagine a system where D Hop is your one? Anderson's your two, Fuller is your three, bye bye Kiki QT, and Kenny Sills is your fourth receiver. You're going to do damage no matter who you play against. I just thought you gotta give him a big contract because there's a lot of them. People are gonna want him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. At the end of the day, you got different types of players. They have different types of mindsets. Do you want to win or do you just want to get the money? So, and I understand a lot of these players' mindset is I want the money. So, like you said, yeah, it all depends on what he want and what we have to offer. Ain't, I mean, it ain't like he is putting up crazy numbers. He got average numbers, probably not even average, but we know the type of player he can be if he was a good team. So, yeah, it just all depends because ain't a lot of these years. It's, people want that money. We see what's going on around the league. Oh, I mean, I have Robbie Anderson on my list, too. Uh, I thought he was really good. I think he'd be a really good pickup for the Texans, uh, speedster. Uh, and he's 6'3", good, good height. Uh, he's real thin. He's similar build to Fuller, but thinner. Yeah. You know, he uh, can win the 50-50 Yeah, ball. and and either whether you keep Fuller or you don't, I still think he's a viable replacement for him. Yep. The two things that was bad about Will Fuller were what injuries and drops. Yeah. Two things that are great about Robbie Anderson. He's only been hurt twice in the past three years. In the past mm -hmm. three years. And it was only two games in 2018, back, back to back or something like that. Just one each. That was it. Second stat on him, 2016, 2017, 2018. I'm not including 2019. He only had one drop. Only one drop in those three years span. Man, do you have need that on the other side? Now think about deep passes that Wolf Fuller has always dropped. And you're like, you know, like every damn time. There's another deep pass Fuller, and he dropped it. I think right away, if Brock Osweiler throwing that deep touchdown uh -huh. against the Wolf Fuller against the Patriots, and we would have won that game if he would have caught that pass. But he dropped it. Now think about it. That was Robbie Anderson. Uh, first thing I thought of right away is you go into offseason thinking about free agency. We have about mm, $55 million in cap space right now. We have a lot. We have a lot, man. Uh, but – First two things you need to take care of, Laramie Tunsil and Sean Watson. Mm -hmm. Now, that will handicap you a little bit, but it'll still give you enough money to sign somebody, <clears throat> okay? Those two right away need just, that's just, no doubt about it, signed them, it's over, okay? Uh, now, just fix the penalty to Tunsil, that's a different story. But other than that, 
uh, with offense or defense. So one for offense, I would say, and I would one up yours with Brandon Scherf. I'm gonna say Joe Thune. Ah, oh, yes, he's very Patriots. good, very good. And Joe Thune is he's huge. He's huge, six five, three eighteen, perfect guard build. And what do you think of a Joe Thune right away? No one even thinks about it right now. Twenty six, what his rookie year, and they were playing against the Los Angeles Rams. Did you hear Aaron Donald's name? Nope. A damn rookie <laughs> slowed him down. A rookie. And this guy has just been getting better every year. Yeah. He started as a 60 on the pro football focus grade. Now he's at an 84. Okay. This guy is tremendous. A lot of teams are going to go after him. He's going to go for a big contract. You know the Patriots aren't going to pay for him. <laughs> they don't pay for nobody. Yeah, they They're replace gonna, everybody. They replace everybody. Joe Dooney would be huge for this team. If you get him, that just... I mean, yeah, you can add a receiver. You can, man, you don't need to do that. You get Joe Thune, build your line. Your line gives Deshaun Watson more than three, four seconds in that pocket. It's over. It's over. It's Tavia. Man, I, I'm not a tough, whatever you guys said. <laughs> but uh, I was thinking Anderson, but you guys just hyped it up even more. So I think I'm going to stick with Anderson. Yeah, I can. Dude, just all the drops Fuller had, they were very, very, very key. And all those injuries and how I said in the last video, our offense cannot function without Fuller for some reason. Mm -hmm. And if, if we have someone that doesn't get injured and can damage defense like that, then, dude, I'll take it any day of the week. You brought up in your list Melvin Gordon, who wanted to come here in the first place, right? Mm -hmm. Melvin Gordon, as you know, held out with the Los Angeles Chargers. Let's say Carlos Hyde leaves his team, right? Because there's a good chance that he will, right? He says he want to stay. I think Melvin Gordon is just a crazy offensive weapon, right? Because he could do what Duke Johnson could do. He could do what Carlos Hyde could do, and even better, right? He's he's fast, he's strong, He, I mean, he's like a tall girly, but he's healthy, right? Melvin Gordon has had 1,000-yard seasons. He almost had a 1,000-yard season this season, but only playing almost like 12, 12, 13 games. Yeah. Melvin Gordon on this team can be special. It probably will be special if we sign him, if Carlos Hyde leaves, because, I mean, I don't want to put hate on Carlos Sainz. I absolutely love his addition. I didn't, I didn't think he was going to be this good, yeah. right? Yeah. But um, there is that chance of them being a one-year wonder, right? There is that chance that, like, if you give somebody a big contract, you know, what's going to happen? You know, we've seen it fail. We've seen it, you know, do good. But with well, Melvin Gordon, you know who you're getting, right? Everybody thought he's not going to be the same player since he's holding out, like Le'Veon Bell was, right? Le'Veon Bell does not have, does not deserve that contract whatsoever, right? And then Melvin Gordon wanted that contract, and everybody says, well, he's nowhere near Bell. He played better than Bell. How many touchdowns did Bell have? Bell had two or three? Yes. Yeah, two or three? Like Melvin Gordon had almost eight. Y'all give him some slack. He's with the yeah. Jets. <laughs> He chose to go there. He, yeah. cho he chose and to go that, there. That's one thing I do have a problem with. Like, Bell, let me talk to you real quick. If you see this video, sir, you had the test to go to. Probably could have went to the Chiefs. The Colts. Oh, don't even say that. Oh, that, yeah. That, I thank you for not going to the Colts, sir. We appreciate <laughs> oh, you for that. Man. But, sir, the Jets, you could have came to H-Town and ball with the Sun, but you chose the Jets. Two games? How many games? They won three? <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand that, bro. We still must love teams. Yeah. All right, so you know, if, if I could just add one more player, you know, um, Hunter Henry. Oh yeah, I was looking at it too. I think Hunter Henry would be a great addition to this team, and you know, he last season he played 13 games. He had 55 catches, 652 yards, five touchdowns, and you know, nobody thought Fells was going to be this good. At one point, Fells had the most touchdowns in the NFL by a tight end. Can you imagine adding a Hunter Henry or an Eric Ebron, right? Because not only are they great receivers, but they could run routes. And when you have a tight end who could run routes, like we saw Travis Kelsey absolutely destroyed us, it makes this team much more dangerous. Because let's be honest, no, no NFL defense is game planning for Darren Bells. No. You have an Ebron, you have a Hunter Henry, you have no choice to game plan him, right? Because Deshaun loves to spread the ball around, right? Mm -hmm. Deshaun don't care. He'll, he'll feed you. And he felt he fed Fells, and I ha and I have no issue with him feeding Hunter Henry or him feeding Larry Ebron. No, not at all. And I have I have Ebron on my list, and I I think he's just a big target. 
I think right away of Andrew Luck and what he did with Luck, 12 touchdowns with Andrew Luck. There's only 16 games. He had 12 touchdowns, okay? And, I mean, man. They have the same agent. Yeah, and then you think about it. with Deshaun Watson with an Eric Ebron, what he did with a nobody in Fells. Fells is a nobody. Let's just be straight. I mean, Fells was nobody. All of a sudden, I mean, all of a sudden, we get him. And what do good quarterbacks, great quarterbacks do? You give them trash, they make it treasure. The right away, I think of Peyton Manning and Brandon Stokely. Who the hell is Brandon Stokely? It's some white boy that goes down the middle of the field and they throw it to him on a cover two every damn time. Peyton Manning will kill you with Brandon Stokely. Tom Brady will kill you with Deion Branch. Who is Deion Branch? Deion Branch never did anything outside the Patriots, just only with the Patriots. Good quarterbacks make trash players treasured. And I'm not saying... Eric Ebron is a trash player. I think he's going to be very treasured with Deshaun Watson. You have Will Fuller, DeAndre Hopkins. Shoot, you could play darn Eric Ebron in the slot. Just watch him work. Watch him work in the slot. Safeties can't guard him. Linebackers can't guard him. I think Hunter Henry will be a good addition. But I think Eric Ebron could be that great addition. Where, you know, you know, besides Fells, we haven't had a good tight end since Owen Daniels. So now we're going to switch to what killed the Texans almost for the past two years on the defensive side of the ball, right? I'm not going to say Jalen Ramsey yet, you know, but yeah, on um, the Houston Texans, you need to sign Chris Jones. Chris Jones from the Kansas City Chief, the defensive tackle. And here's why I say that. He only played in about 13 games, right? And those 13 games had an 84.9 pro football focus grade, nine sacks, a forced fumble, 22 solo tackles. He's great against the run, and he's great against the pass. And let's be honest, as much as I love DJ Reader, he's a one-dimensional player. <laughs> Derek, DJ Reader only had 2.5 sacks on the season, right? He And this team lacked pass rush. We saw it against the Chiefs. We saw it against the Bills. We need a pass rush because, let's be honest, J.J. Watt, dude, he's, you know, he's breaking down every, every other year. He's me. Chris Jones makes this team better. He takes off the pressure of Watt. You have, you have to game plan for Chris Jones as well. Like I said, he's great against the run. He's great against the pass. He's 25 years old. You could pay this man, you know, and, and then he could really solidify your defense. I think Chris Jones, will be, <clears throat> Chris Jones will be a great addition to this Houston Texans defense. Kenneth, who do, who do you want on the defense? Um, well, no, Obi. Yeah, Oh, I would like to get <laughs> Yeddy. From oh, the Jaguars. I don't think I said his name right. Yannick. But Ngakwe. Yannick. I don't know how to say that last name. Ngakwe. I'm not even going to try. But, um, yeah, so we need to get him because I feel like we need another defensive end that's effective, that can pass for us, stop the run, like Clowney did for us. But um, I feel like this guy, he's, you know what I'm saying, he's he's not injury prone. He stays pretty healthy, and that's what we really need to invest in is some healthy players, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, that's what I think we should get. Eight sacks on the season, four forced fumbles, very good against the run, mm -hmm. very good against the pass. You know, we've seen him up close and personal. We've seen him wreak havoc against the Texans game. We we, we saw him in the, in, in the AFC Championship against the Patriots just absolutely just take over that game. You know, he's very young. He's 24 years old. And this is where I think Deshaun Watson plays. And I think Deshaun Watson attracts free agents. I think people want to play for Deshaun Watson, right? I don't think Yannick Ngakwe wants to play for Garner Minshew or Nick <laughs> Foles. Or Nick Foles. They gave him that horrible contract. That Brock Osweiler yeah. contract, right? Yeah. Right? They gave him that contract. I don't... I, I think adding Yannick takes a lot of pressure off Watt because as we know, you know, Watt's on the decline, sadly, right? Um, and he's just going to booster everybody around him. So that's why I think Texas need to sign Yannick. Can you imagine if we signed Chris Jones and Yannick Ngakwe? <laughs> You ain't gonna be able to tell me nothing. Just know we better get rid of Rack though. But yeah, man, we signed them too. Man, defense gonna be top five. Call me bias if you want. Defense <clears throat> gonna be top five. Harley, who do you want for this Houston Texans defense? Uh, defense, like players wise, I don't even think of a player. I think of just the whole scheme. You need to, you either need to get rid of Rack or move on with him, make him retire, let him retire, whatever you want to do. But. Yo, you could a if you have those three pass rushers, and if it's Ngakwe, JJ, and Whitney Merciless, it's gonna be the same thing like you had before with Clowney, Merciless, and JJ. And the biggest problem with them three is was Rack, and Rack could not figure out a way 
to utilize all three of them and have them just pass rush together, do different things. I mean, schematic wise, this guy is 73 years old. He has seen all these defenses in his lifetime. He has all the experience in the world. There is no excuse that you can tell me Whitney Merciless is an absolute ghost on the defense whenever Clowney and Watt were on the field. I mean, and then Clowney leaves, and we all know as fans, Merciless is a bad dude. Like, this dude can wreak havoc. His spin move is like Dwight Freeney-esque. I mean, it is just nasty. And now, no Clowney, and all of a sudden, in the first few games, man, you got Whitney Merciless challenging for Defensive Player of the Year. Five sacks, I mean, five forced fumbles. And it was just, and then for a while, JJ gets hurt. Rip my man JJ. But sooner or later, there's going to have to be a decision made with JJ Watt. Mm. I hate to say that. Mm. I love JJ Watt. But I, I don't think they're ever going to cut him. That's just my idea. I don't think they're ever going to let him go. Uh, it would be his own person to let him go. But he is a city of Houston guy. Uh, he will be the mayor probably one day. And he's going to... He's not wrong. I mean, he's going to be doing something. something, man. Let me say something. Yes, sir. It's time for the son to take over there. I'm sorry, JJ. Yeah. Oh, you got to go, man. You gotta, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's how He's been saying. driving that Ferrari too long. It's not <laughs> time to hide, hand the keys over to, yeah. to Deshaun Watson. No, and Deshaun's going to take this team <clears throat> over. Whether JJ wants to let him or not, well, Deshaun will just damn take the damn keys right, from you know him. He will. You know what I mean? So, yeah. He's doing know, it now. I think yeah, he yeah, he's doing it now. So, but... Now, if you want to say, now, if, if I have to pick a player. Well, no, well before you answer that question, okay. right? Because Rack's going to be gone regardless, right? Okay. We, we're, Rack, Rack is going to be gone. That's, you know, I'm not, th- th- this isn't breaking news, right? We, we, we've seen this man for almost six years and nothing has gotten better. It's actually been a decline. Who do you want as a defense coordinator for this team? Anybody but Ray. Okay. That's <laughs> <cool>. <laughs> See, for me, I think a, a coach like Marvin Lewis would be fantastic for this defense. Yeah, and I, I agree with that, too. The Bengals' defense was phenomenal, phenomenal. when he was there. And yeah. under him was uh, was uh, Coach Zimmer for the Vikings, who's now the coach there. You see how their defense is going. So they have – he's had people underneath him that know how to run defenses. And he's from that Tony Dungy system with Tampa Bay Buccaneers whenever they had their 4-3. That's all they did. They, they, they did the exact same thing. Different skill set with Martin. All he is is a speed guy. That's all he is. He strikes speed. And they just cross Merciless in him. And easy sacks. Martin Martin sacked Josh Allen, I mean, about 30 yards down the field. I mean, it was ridiculous. And so, Rack has these moments of wisdom. And then you have moments of just like, you know, like, man, dude, just go to the AAA and retire, dude. Like, I mean, it's just... <laughs> I mean, come on, man. It, it, it is, it's ridiculous. But that's what I think about the defense. Tapia, adding, up to, uh, adding on to this Houston Texans defense, who, did you, who do you want? I mean, I, I think I'm trying to get rid of Jonathan Joseph, if you want to be honest. <laughs> just because he just pissed me off. <laughs> <laughs> he just gets beat. All the time. I'm not saying he's the only corner that gets beat, but it's like, dude, I think it's just time to hang it up. I think we can add somebody like Trey Waynes. I'm not saying he's like, impresses a lot of people, but I think he can be solid in, in our defense. And I think he can just improve by a lot. Just because I've seen, I mean, we all saw Lonnie Johnson's improvement from the beginning to now. I mean, he got... B, but then again, it's Travis Kelsey. Like, I mean, there's not a lot of corners that can cover Travis Kelsey man to man. So I mean, I think that'll be a good addition, and and I think something I was thinking about right now when y'all were bringing up Chris Jones and what's the guy's name? Yannick Ngakwe. Yeah, him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I with the whole JJ Watt thing, I also don't think JJ would mind playing limited amount of snaps. Mm-hmm. That's a good. Uh, that's a good take right there. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of people won't like that, but you can tell he wants to win. And if that's something that has to happen for us to win, then I'm pretty sure he wouldn't mind that at all. Yeah. So, question, would you, uh, like, I know you said that you want J. Joe gone, but would you add J. Joe to that DB coaching staff? Because oh, yeah. say J. Joe leaves, right? Say J. I mean, 
who, as good as Bradley Roby is, he hasn't done a lot to yeah. get the room. Do you add a J. Joe to your coaching staff? Yeah, I think I would. Yeah, I feel like that's the way now to test him. Now that we got Brian Cushing, Andre T. J. Johnson, T.J. Yates, like you have all these players that used to play with us. Now they're coaching for us. I think that, and I, I like that. I like that idea of adding J.J. Yeah. as a um, DB coach because, for one, he already have the DB's respect. And, like, they look up to J.J., they, you know, so they like, they love talking to J.J. about certain situations with the defense. So, yeah, man, I think that would be smart. Yeah. They love talking to J.J. about certain situations with the defense. So, yeah, man, I think that would be smart to add J.J. as a coach. Get him off that field because, yeah, J.J., it's time to hang it up, brother. <laughs> he ain't got it no more. <laughs> He's going to be added to the coaching staff. That's, that's yeah. just a, that's a no-doubter. John McClain has even came out and said, as soon as Jonathan Joseph wants to retire, he's going to have a spot on the Texan staff. That. He is. So that that's a no-doubt. Uh, one of the things Vernon Hargraves had a lot of trouble at with the De Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they drafted him, and all they had was a bunch of rookies, a bunch of young players on that secondary. And he's looking for someone to guide him. He mm -hmm. comes over here to Houston because of lack of effort from various Arians. He comes over here, he didn't exactly ball out, but he played a lot better than what he did at Tampa Bay. And um, all of his credit that he was talking to was to Jonathan Joseph. All these cornerbacks look up to him whenever you sign Mike Adams. Mike Adams wasn't a guy that you're gonna sign because you're gonna play him. No, he came in because he wanted more experience in the secondary. You have a young secondary besides Gibson. Uh, you mean you have Justin Reed? All these guys are young, man. Hargraves, Conley, these guys are not old. Your secondary is renewed, and with, which I can credit to Bill O'Brien is he did what our two weakest things was O line and secondary. And what did he do up. during the season? During the season, as a general manager, he adds, you know, Larry Matunsel right before the season. He adds Kenny Stills. He adds Carlos Hyde, Duke Johnson. Vernon Hargraves, Gary Ann Conley, to Sean Gibson in the offseason. I mean, he did all this stuff. I mean, we got to give credit where credit's due. Yeah, I mean, the secondary did as well as they could, okay? I mean, we knew they were going to be weak. We were all scared of the secondary. Mm -hmm. You know, especially in that same game. You know, I can just see Aaron Colvin already. I don't know why you playing <laughs> That's too. That's who Hargraves definitely played way better. You know, way better. I mean, I, we could throw anybody out there a corner and they could have made a better judgment call on Man. whether or not to guard those receivers 20 yards off. I mean, you see, th th that's what the difference is. Is If you look at that play, the final play, you see Jonathan Joseph. He's doing the exact same thing Aaron Colvin is, 20 yards off. But the thing is, is Jonathan Joseph stays at 20 yards. He doesn't continue running back like yeah. Aaron Colvin and just lets them, here you go, there's a, there's a field goal for you. Go ahead and win the game. I'm, I don't feel like Even though it was no a 57 yard, it was yeah, still like, man, still. come on now. And for what I was, for what I read, he did not do what he was told to do. That's exactly why he mm -hmm. cut him. Everybody was pressed besides J. Joe. And for you to be the inside corner on the open side field, mm -hmm. and you, something told you to come off 20 yards, mm -hmm. makes no sense, but yeah, we off him. Man. He, thank God we cut him. That's what I think. Last name I want to add, um, because there's a good chance we lose DJ Reader. And the guy who I'm going to talk about, he's from Houston. Mm -hmm. He actually played at Chavez High School. Michael Brockers. 10 minutes from here. Mm -hmm. Michael Brockers oh, yeah. will be a fantastic addition for this Houston Texans oh, team. Yeah. Because he's huge. He's mm -hmm. like 6'4". He's very big. He's great against the run. And he has times where he can rush the passion. And he's going to be cheap. Oh, he's going to be easily cheap, right? Mm -hmm. He's 28, 29 years old. He still has stuff left in the tank. We've seen... Defensive tackles older than him still flourish in this league. Hey, Jerome McCord had a fantastic season. Um, Michael Brockers should be a huge addition. And, you know, this was our first free agency video. You know, uh, as always, go take soon. Go Rockets. Go Astros. Cowboy Cerrone is going to knock out Conor McGregor tonight. You guys have a blessed day.